Greetings and Happy New Year from Hopalong Hollow. We finally got a reprieve from that very, very cold and bitter weather. And so today the sun is shining and I'm out here and I want to do a quick review and let you know what's been going on for the last couple of weeks here in Hopalong Hollow. <laughs> Godfrey <laughs> and this is a week after the video that I just showed you Godfrey's nine weeks old now aren't you buddy and you're learning really fast our animals really took a beating this year first of all Keith one of our great Pyrenees who was quite old he was close to 12 years old well he'd been suffering from cancer for a while when we finally had to put him to sleep because he was he was in pain and when that happened almost immediately Liam his brother who's the same age really wasn't able to guard this place and about five months ago we started having this is right after Keats had to be put to sleep a predator was coming in here we still don't know what it was it actually took it took two ducks it took four geese four geese I have never had geese taken before ever and so I was down to two geese and one duck and if I were to keep any animal at all on this property, it would be geese. I mean, if I had no chickens or ducks, geese are really my favorite because they don't get into problems. They don't, they're generally not anything for predators to, to get. Predators usually leave them alone because of their size. But for some reason, some tough predator got in here and took four of them within a matter of two weeks. It really hurts when you lose animals because for me they're not just farm animals, they are parts of the family. Everybody has a name. I could tell you the name of every single chicken here. And a lot of them, we have them for a long time and you know, you grow to love them. So even though it's just a duck to some people, for me, it's a little ducky part of the family. Fortunately, it's been weeks since we had any predator problems and so I felt safe in getting and adding to the flocks here. So we've added some ducks and we've added some more geese. And now we've got some little beauties here. Everybody seems to be getting along quite good. Hello, little ladies. I haven't named these little girls yet because I just got these three yesterday. But some of the others over here. Hello. Over here we have our head duck, which is Jangles, right there in front, and he has been alone for such a long time. He has had no ducky mates, only the two geese here that the predators didn't get. And so we added three more ducks for him about a week ago. And if you'll notice, I don't know if you can see him very well, but the gray one there in the middle of the sleeping ducks has got, he's a crested duck, and so he has a pom-pom on his head. But he actually has three pom-poms on his head, which is pretty unusual because usually they only have one anyway. He's got this crazy look about him. Look at that guy. So James named him Einstein, and I bet you can guess why. Hmm, he's got a very similar hairdo to Albert Einstein. So that's Einstein. Next to him is a Pekin, a white Pekin duck, and his name is Percival. And the beautiful, beautiful girl here, I don't know what she is with a black head, the only girl here is uh, Eustacia, Eustacia Vi. Brought home these three little Muscovies. They're pretty young and they're all females. And you really want more females than males when you have ducks. If your males outnumber your females, you're gonna have a problem in the spring because those females will never stop being mated. They will be mated to death in some cases. I've actually seen it happen. I've never gotten Muscovies before because I've always thought that they were kind of ugly. These ones are actually pretty good looking. They don't have all those warty growths all around their face that most Muscovies are known for. But they might be a mix. But they're all female. So at this point, Godfrey is in training. Liam is his guide and so am I and so is James. Every day, several times a day, we walk the perimeter, fence perimeter with him. 
so that he knows his territory. And I have to keep him on a leash when he's outside because I'm trying to keep him from doing the thing he's not to do, and that would be to chase the birds. But he's a puppy, he wants to chase those birds, so I have to be firm with him to show him that his job is to protect the birds. That's why he's here, and of course because we, we love him. But uh, that's why he's here, so he's to guard the peacocks, the ducks, the geese, and the chickens. These two wonderful geese were the two survivors out of my geese that were attacked this year, Ramona and Sebastian. So yesterday I brought in some three Chinese geese. So these are the three geese that we just got and they are Chinese geese with one male and two females. I think they're really elegant looking, but oh, do they make the noise. Ramona and Sebastian are just not really too enthralled with them as yet. It's good to see that beautiful blue sky amid the somber colors of winter. And we still have a little bit of green in our grass. Now our creek bank here looks really shallow right now. But when we get some heavy rain, this rage is like a river, I'm telling you. It rages like a river. You wouldn't even believe it. You can hear it from the house. Right now it's very calm and very low and the ducks love it. And we also have a pond behind the house that only fills up during heavy, heavy rains. They have all these little redheads perking up the scenery. With all these drab grays and browns. I love to see red hens and roosters. Look at this big, beautiful boy right here. This is Ben-Hur and isn't he spectacular? And he was one of the runaways from the neighbors that just came over and moved into our place. And their guardian. <laughs> I think he's more interested in trash right now. Front yard garden here is as... <laughs> Just as dead looking as everything else, except for, of course, the ivy, which never seems to die, ever. In this small woodland garden, across from that garden room that we put in at the end of the summer, I put about six new hellebores. And they seem to be have survived the uh, three, deg three degree temperatures, although it did do a little damage on the leaves. They do like the cold, so I hope they make it. Other than that, I see several roses that seem to be doing all right. And here's Puppy. Here we go. Let's go for our little, our little walk, Betty. All right. You're such a good boy. As I said, this is going to be a pretty quick video. But in the next video, I want to put together a plan for the potager because I want to change things in the potager quite a bit. Over the years, I've kept things much the same in my planting arrangements here in the potager. But now that I've got that wonderful little greenhouse there, I really want to liven things up and really build and plant a lot of things that will actually enhance the greenhouse and the greenhouse will enhance the gardens. So this is going to be a plan for the week where I take each one of these raised beds and plan something different for them that will be for four seasons. So here's a bright spot in the garden and it is in the potager. And it is the lavender plants that I put in last spring, I think it was. Yeah, last spring. They were called sensational lavenders. We didn't know whether they would take or not. Well, one of them died. Three of them are doing okay. They've managed to make it through the torrential rains and the freezing temperatures. So far, so good on these. So, in the next video, we will get back into this potager and do some work in here. Make some plans on paper, and we'll see you then. In the meantime, I will just let this little fellow dig up this soil for me. <laughs> okay, see you later. Bye-bye.